Today is September 27th, 2013. The three people who are joining me today are from the Ames High Class of 1963. Thank you so much for being willing to share some experiences with me. Um, I just nod yes if you're willing for me to record your voice and your um, picture today. Okay, terrific, thank you. So, um, in the opposite of protocol, we're gonna let the gentleman go first. Mike, we'll start with you if you'll give us your full name, your birth date, and a little memory about your elementary school in Ames. I'm Michael James Allen. I was born on January 13th, 1945. I lived uh, in the Ames neighborhood uh, around Harding, Roosevelt, and Marston. Went to elementary school oh, at nice. Roosevelt Elementary School. And of course, on to uh, Ames High School. What was it like in the Roosevelt neighborhood? Well, it was, uh, I always look forward to the summer vacations, of course. And uh, they had a, uh, a summer playground over there with box hockey, and we climbed on the jungle gyms and all that sort of stuff. But we had great teachers and very memorable times. It was a lot of fun. Archie, you're up next. My name is Archie Lou Green. My birthday is July 18th, 1945. I went to Lincoln School, which is now no longer Lincoln. It's an administrative building. All of the black children, who were my relatives, by the way, we all went to Lincoln. We all lived within maybe six or seven blocks of each other. It was a good time. How big was the African American community when you were in elementary school? Children of adults were, there were probably less than 50 of us in town. Maybe more, but not many more. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the academics and the fun times at Lincoln School. Lincoln was an exceptional school. Um, we all, we had young go gyms and merry-go-rounds. And a, an interesting thing at Lincoln was, of course, Mr. Landy, our, our janitor, and the cinders on the playground. And we girls would love to hang upside down. <laughs> I, I was thinking of that. I see London, I see France, I see someone down in France. And it, it, for me, well, should I save the time about accidents? It, in our grade school, I needed to go to the restroom, and several of us in second grade went to the restroom, and we could hang on the bars on, above the stalls, and I did. And I lost my holding my legs and fell into the toilet. <laughs> That was, I saw the universe. <laughs> no, just because I would like to follow up on that, were you scolded for those um, antics? Or was, it, or, or was it condoned? It was okay. It was, I think I was, I can't remember well. I mean, I was sent home, I threw up. <laughs> and, 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 and 
they, they, I remember they took me home. I think I, I was kind of reprimanded <laughs> afterwards. Okay. And Mary Ellen, your full name? I am Mary Ellen Burgonier Vogt. I was born February 18, 1945 in Mary Greeley Hospital. Uh, I lived in 620 Ash Avenue in Campus Town at the corner of, uh, at the intersection of Storm Street and Ash. Uh, the neighborhood was great. We lived on a block that was a circular block. And so if we were really the, the kids in the neighborhood, we could start in the backyard and run the entire block in people's backyards without ever having to, to leave and, and go out on the street. And that was always fun, but always a little dicey with the neighbors looking out their windows and so forth and pointing their fingers and saying, you kids, you know, as we're tearing around in the backyard. Um, I went to Louise Crawford Elementary School, which is now the um, administrative offices for uh, Ames Public Schools. And I had an opportunity to visit the school a couple of uh, years ago. Uh, and went in, and the first grade classroom looked so much like it did then because there are these huge, I've never seen another school like it, these huge individual blackboards that were all put together like a book, and they would fan like this, and so one, the teacher could write on one or then hold over the second. Does that make sense to you? Can you picture that? And it's still there. And to see that after all these years on the, on the board was just remarkable. And of course the room that was so big looks very little now, but uh, um, that was my elementary school. Another memory I have very clearly um, is, is so different than what my children and grandchildren experienced, and that is that we went home for school for lunch. Went home, uh, you know, for lunch uh, from school every day. And walking home and having lunch and coming back, and I have no idea how long the lunch period was because all the kids did that. That was just all what we did. We didn't take lunches until until junior high school. Yeah. Uh, because you mentioned um, junior high school, if you would each reflect on whether you felt there was a town and gown split in Ames. When you got to high school, I'm thinking about what it was like to go to high school and was there a competition or between Welch and Central? How was that like? Mike, go ahead. Uh, I think it, at first when we all got to high school there probably was a competition between Welch and Central and uh, but I played football so we were all thrown in together and we were all one team so that was the only thing I can remember about the Welch girls is that when we got to when the parties came around the dances after the basketball games they were dating guys who were like already out of high school and two years older, <laughs> and they, those guys would all come back for the dances, so we ended up being wallflowers <laughs> because we couldn't find anybody, to, not everybody did that, but a lot of them did, I could never understand that, but uh, anyway, uh, no, I think by the end uh, of uh, high school we were all great friends, and it was terrific. Archie, did you ob observe that initial separation and then coming together? Yes. Yes, um, the, the world kids were stigmatized. They always, we, we always thought they were brighter. Oh, I, we, we, we were. Yeah. <laughs> there was no question about it. I just can't we had, but the central kids were more community oriented. We were closer together. But the world's kids were brighter. Yeah. <laughs> Mary Ellen? That's funny, because I, I would never yeah. have thought anybody felt that way. I, I think at the beginning, we just didn't know each other. And because we'd all come from different elementary schools, then it was just a matter of, of getting to know each other. And um, so there was kind of the Welch kids and the Central kids. Um, and it's funny, because we still sometimes use that expression, you know, you, you, were, you were one of the Welch kids That's or you were one of the, the Central kids. Yeah. Um, so I think there was a little bit about the, of that. I think there were a lot more central kids than there were Welch kids. It seemed to me that there, yeah, that we had a smaller group coming out of, of Welch. Yeah. Um, but I remember very well in high school when we <laughs> we would uh, ostensibly go to church. My parents belonged to the Collegiate Methodist Church, and then others were at the Presbyterian Church and so forth in Campus Town. And then our friends, who were the former central kids, 
were in churches downtown in their, their area, and we'd all meet at the Rainbow Cafe. We'd walk in with our parents, walk out the door, get in somebody's car, head down to the Rainbow <laughs> on Sunday mornings, watch the time so we could be back at the time when church was over, you know, and, and uh, I remember that was a great coming together of Welch and Central, all, studying, all cutting out on church and, and uh, getting together wow. down at the Rainbow. Wow. <laughs> Because we wanted to concentrate on the high school experience, um, let's start with the more studious aspect of it and the academics. Could you speak to teachers that motivated you or teachers who you felt could have done a better job, if you feel comfortable saying that? And anybody can start. We don't have to go one, two, three. Go ahead, because I really don't remember oh, very many of the teachers. I have, yeah, I have some, Bill some Rip, very I remember, so. yeah, strong memories. Um, both ways, positive and, and uh, not so not so good. Um, the 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 teacher that I think I modeled my I was an educator and still am for many many years and modeled a lot of my teaching and my work after Mary McNally. Yeah. Um, she's the first person that made me feel smart. I was not a stellar student. I had much much more to do than study, um, and and enjoyed all the other aspects of high school uh, more than the studying at the at that time in my life. But she made me, and really in our senior year uh, in English Lit and World Lit, um, she made me feel smart. And I saw her at, when we were, had the 30th reunion. Um, I had was walking down campus town, I mean downtown Ames, and stopped in at a, at a shop and a beauty shop or something. And uh, the woman who owned the beauty shop in downtown Ames said, do you know who's sitting over there in, this, in the chair? And I said, no. And she said, well, just walk around and see if you recognize her. Wow. And it was Mary McNally. And I, I just got goosebumps. And I, I, we had a chance to talk, and she remembered me, and she remembered my brothers and so forth, but she, uh, who were older. But I said to her, I bet you don't remember the, the, our final examination in English literature in 1963. And she said, no, but I have a feeling you do. <laughs> and the question that she asked was, you're going to have a dinner party. See if you guys remember this. You're going to have a dinner party, and you are going to invite six people to your dinner party, all of whom were authors that we studied during this semester. I still have a final exam. That, that, that That's good. Six authors, she said, and on the, as part of the exam, write who they were, why you invited them, next to whom would they be sitting, and why did you place them in that order around the dinner table, and what you think the topics of conversation will be. And this was 1963 final exam, and I got an A on it, and I, and I, I was so proud of it. She, she was a phenomenal, phenomenal teacher. And there are many of us in our class who went into uh, English as a major, um, and I think because of, of her influence and, and ended up teaching for many years. The other side of the coin, and I don't even remember his name and it's irrelevant at this point, was a biology teacher who was, um, as I recall, a real estate agent after school and was never really available. And in so it was when we were sophomores, he uh, required a, 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 that we do a bug collection, an insect collection, anybody remember that? And I worked and worked and worked on my insect collection, and we had to mount them and give the scientific name, and had our bugs and brought them in our cigar boxes, and it was a really, really big project. And my dad had helped me on it, and he really worked hard, and I was proud of it. And I brought it to school, and he told the class, and, and, and I could see, you know, everybody carrying their bugs from all these different periods, and he said, um, you, I don't need to see them. He said, I, the, the, the process was what I wanted you to do. I wanted you to make the bug collection. I wanted you to learn about the bugs. But he said, there's no, 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 needs, no reason for me to, to see them. Oh. Uh, and I look back at him as an educator and thought he should have been fired. Yeah. My dad was furious about yeah. it. Yeah. So those sure. are really two opposite sure. experiences. Sure. Archie, do you have a reflection of a teacher that made a difference? Uh, it's Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen said, uh, Miss McNally was very special to me. I, I thought Mrs. Thompson was very special too. The whole experience of Ames High at that time was special. I, I do not remember a teacher 
I, I thought that Mr. Cole was unusual. <laughs> I hadn't met anything like that before. Um, and of course, I did go into English, and Ms. Bernalli was very influential in my choice. I think my One, one last chance, Mike. <laughs> yes. The, the one thing I did want to say was that we were the first class into the new high school. Um, we spent half days uh, downtown in the old high school, half days. So at noon, uh, I would go home to eat lunch and then on up to the new high school. So, and I don't remember whether the teachers actually made that same transition from downtown to up to the new one uh, during that time period or not, but we were the first uh, graduating class from the new high school, 1963. And we all call it the new high school. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even though it's 40 years old. 50 years, 50 years, 50 years, old. years old. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up because that's going to be, was going to be one of my questions. You had a unique experience because while some of your classmates were downtown, other classmates were at the new high school. Do I have that right? Yep. Yeah. During your high school. That was our junior year. Your junior year. How did that affect you? What? How did that alter your experience? Did that change your, your high school experience in any way? I probably didn't think about it too awfully much. I think we were that, was, that was just the way it was, yeah. and it was a brand new building, brand new facilities, brand new chemistry labs, brand new everything. We did all the athletics still down at the old uh, on Lincoln Way, we played football, and then we played in the old gym, uh, basketball, and that sort of stuff. And drama and music were right. in the old school. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think it was just very exciting to have new facility. I remember having classes in the Christian church, and that's when I took Mr. Briff's Latin I class. class. I oh. And I also remember walking into the new high school, and it was was kind of dirty. It was uh, well, probably the faculty drove in two cars. We had to walk into the new school, and that was tiring because it was. It seemed like a long walk. After lunch, and I, I, it was I, I wasn't used to walking so long to get to a building. It, it was dirty. I mean, because there was no grass were, or anything else, and they were still working. And they were still working on it, still, on it. Still, so it's still no easy and dirty. Yeah. But a couple of funny things, <clears throat> and I don't even remember who it was. I should ask some of the probably some of the Welch girls. I don't know or Central girls. I have no idea. But we went to the school board and we asked the school board if we could paint the oh, school. Really? We did. Really? We said if you'll supply it because the walls were cinder block and it was yeah. so, it looked like a jail. It was yeah. so ugly. Yeah. And so we said, if you'll give us the paint, we will paint. Can you imagine? I can't even and we were serious and they just kinda of went, you know, go home. <laughs> but and they wouldn't let us paint the school. But it was that's a really strong memory that it was just, it was gray and yeah. it was a yeah. cinder block, but it was exciting. Yeah. The chemistry lab exciting. and all that was very exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think you were saying what were the general feelings during our junior mm -hmm. year. It seemed chaotic to me. It, it, because of the long bus ride between and, mm -hmm. and it, it, there, there was, it was a bit chaotic. And I don't think the teachers moved. I think the kids all moved. Mm -hmm. And um, that, at, at the beginning of the year, especially our junior year, it was a bit chaotic. Well, and then I think all the activities after school were probably down at the old high school. Yeah. So then you had to transfer or ride your bike. I rode my bike yeah. through my senior year. Well, my parents let me drive a car, primarily because of the new high school, so yeah. that was a plus. Yeah, my dad was a car dealer, and I didn't even get a car. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, um, Mike, you had mentioned football, so let's talk a little bit about extracurricular activities and what kinds of things that you were in and, and, and why they were important to you. Well, I played football, um, a little bit of basketball, but not, not the last two years, and uh, track. So um, in football, uh, all I remember, the, the last year, 
uh, Boone and Ames was a very big rivalry, and we had always been beaten Boone, I believe. And when I was a senior at Port like heck, I remember being tackled one time and almost drowning with the water. But a friend of mine, Connie Android, we were warming up in the end zone, and Connie Android ran in front of Butch Mickelson, who was this big strapping end. He fell and he broke his leg during warm up to the to the boot game because one of his um, uh, football players that he played football with uh, ran in front of him and tripped him. Oh, so anyway, and we lost that game, and I think the whole town of Ames was angry with us. Yeah. And Terrible. We were bruised for, I still am bruised about it. But, <laughs> and then we had um, High Covey was the track coach. And I can always remember the highlight of uh, track season was going to his house and he sold Adidas uh, shoes out of his basement. And if you were able to move to a four-pronged shoe uh, to run in the meets, you were up there with the elite. So we all went over there, went down to the basement, he fitted us all, but uh, he made individual workouts for everybody. Uh, when I was a senior, we won both the state indoor and the state outdoor for the state of Iowa. So it was uh, a very uh, fun time. And that wasn't enough to compensate for the uh, Boone situation? No. <laughs> Our senior year in football just, I think actually we had a losing season and it was not good. So <laughs> at one of the football games, I remember going out for a pass and I think Jim Tro was our, no, Grayball was our quarterback, threw me the pass, I turned around and somebody hit me with a helmet in my thigh. Mm -hmm. I ended up that night in the hospital with all this blood. They tried to drain the blood, couldn't, so I was in the hospital for like four nights. Finally it centralized, they drained it, and I was out. But uh, yeah, football season that, that year was not the best. Um, and I don't remember anything about basketball. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, any other things? Um, the the boys group um, girls was called high Y. Uh, GRE. 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 That's GRE. right. Boys was high. Was boys high? GRE. GRE. Uh, well, that was all I remember is the Letterman's Club from um, yeah. being a Letterman for yes. the athletes. Okay. So, Archie, what kept you busy when you weren't studying English? Uh, uh, I was in drama club and. Mr. Hamilton was our main advisor at that time. And I really liked drama club and of course music, Mr. Cross's directing music. I enjoyed that a lot. Those were the activities that I really liked. Well, my two friends here to my right are being very modest because Mike was also senior class president and Margie, Archie was student body president our senior year. So, a slight over. <laughs> Thank you for a slight. Yeah. I, I was at the spirit and I was going to yeah. point that out. Yeah, both uh, very exciting. And Archie was the third girl in the history of Ames High to be elected as student body president. So, that was, uh, and certainly the first African American, perhaps the only, I don't know, in no. years. But uh, set the stage for that. Yeah. Uh, I like Archie. I was very involved in music and in drama. That, that really was what I loved. Um, and working with Mr. Hamilton and uh, girls sextet that we sang all over the place. It was a lot of fun. Um, and and have continued to sing and be involved in music groups to this day, as well as in theatrical groups. And so it really set kind of my life pattern in terms of what I like to do in my off hours. Uh, so really drama and music. I was in band for a while, in marching band, and. Um, my senior year, I decided not to be in band. I don't remember why, but I just wasn't as interested. And Pet Club was very involved in Pet Club and um, wrote the skits for the Pet Club our senior year. And so, oh, and that was basically before uh, women could play sports. <laughs> Tell me about so it. So <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. I don't think Ains High we had a women's no. team of any sort. We also went to the school board for that. Um, yeah. We wanted to. We did. <laughs> or they played uh, they played we some did. basketball I think that's we did. three on uh, six on six type thing yeah we played basketball four. yeah and we were but very was, tall it was yeah. a whole bunch of tall girls and I was the shortest of this group and I was pretty tall yeah but we had some really tall girls Iowa girls basketball was huge and Ames was not allowed to play yeah we went to the school board 
again. <laughs> you, you again. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We went to the school board to see could we please be allowed to play um, with other schools and, mm -hmm. and become part of the Iowa girls basketball sure. tradition. And they said no, it was not feminine and that we could hurt ourselves. And once again, go away. Um, yeah. yeah, that 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 was a that was sad. That was a an anger that a lot of us felt that yeah. we could not participate in athletics. And I think there's a lot, you know, when Title IX came came around and girls could finally participate, there I think a lot of learning how to be competitive in a good way, learning how to um, not only take care of yourself physically, but really that whole notion of competition. Sure. And I think and teamwork. It, and teamwork and give and take and all of that we were not allowed to do except in an intramural kind of way. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of, I'm looking at kind of my parents' generation too, women were learning how to negotiate and compete in not so good ways, I mean kind of undermining and some other things that, 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 that women can do because we didn't, we weren't given the skills to how, to how to get out there and scrabble and really be able to compete in a, in a healthy environment. I, I think it was a, um, it was a wonderful thing when, when Title IX came along. So you I, just played, go oh, please. I, in Iowa City, there is a high school I live near wow. at Sydney High. It reminds me very, very much of Ames High. They're both very similar, and when I go up the hill from in Iowa City, I pass the track and field and can look down into it, and it just reminds me of it. The university yeah. influence is probably yes. operating yes. there a little bit. Yes. Would you get? Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. So yes. let's talk about um, not only extracurricular activities, but fun things you did in high school. Not your academics, and not necessarily your extracurricular. But what did kids do when they? had some free time on their hands? Hmm. That's the trouble question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We went to trouble. the rainbow. Cut out of church. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think almost everything I did was with my athletic friends, yeah. you know. Uh, and, you know, we would, I basically never had a girlfriend when I was in Ames High. Um, always went to all the dances, loved the dances, and everything else. Um, we were dates to the spirit dance for senior yeah. year. Yeah, very old. Oh, oh, yeah, tell me what, what I wrote in your book. <laughs> I don't know whether that belongs to oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I, I wrote in the book in my scrapbook um, for the spirit dance that he was very upset that I was not the spirit queen that year. <laughs> I, I told her that she deserved it. He told me that she I deserved it. And I queen. thought, that's what, what a date, you know. Yeah. I was fine. He, yeah. he was upset. Yeah. So, you know what we did, um, and I think a lot of kids did it, we dragged Maine. We would yes. meet at the, we would yes. meet at the railroad station yes. downtown, and everybody would meet there, and we would spend the entire evening. American Graffiti, the movie, I mean, yeah. that really was what we did, yeah. and uh, we would just slowly drive up and down. Now I can't do it with all the little ins and outs that okay. they have on Main Street, but we would spend a lot of time doing that, and then head to Charcos uh, to get cokes or whatever. Um, it's all innocent fun, all sort of, yeah. fun. sort of innocent fun. Compared to today, yes. Compared to today, it was very innocent fun. Archie, did you we, have a, go ahead. Yeah, we, uh, a lot of us would go to Franco's downtown for their french fries. And the May Drive was on the oh. other end of town, I remember that. And. The movie theaters that they don't have in Collegian. Collegian and what, the varsity. Yeah. Drive in. How about the drive in. Drive -in? Oh, yeah. drive -in? Yeah. oh, that, yeah. We, that one we were at the trip right. in trouble. We'd all pile into yeah. the trunk. You see how many kids we could get in the trunk of the car to get into the drive in <laughs> to pay for two people and have about eight in the car. Yeah. <laughs> So we know that Mike and Mary Ellen at least had one date. How about you? <laughs> that was probably it. I don't remember. But. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we had an exchange student from Italy. 
uh, and I remember I went to the prom with him. Uh, Bonanati. He just passed away this past year, oh, 2012. Yeah, his um, his uh, brother in Italy sent an email or a fa uh, Facebook and said that Giovanni had passed away and just wanted us to know, those of us on Facebook, mm -hmm. how much Giovanni treasured that time when he was in Ames, mm -hmm. which was really nice. He was nice. involved in a lot of things. He was involved in a lot of things. Yeah. Did you go to the? You went to the dances too. Yes, but not many though. Not as many as most people, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mary Ellen has alluded to this. <laughs> um, I asked this question of all people. I've interviewed people from 96 to 16 about growing up in Ames. And I asked this because it says what the times were like. What did kids do that got them into trouble? And were you a part of it, if you're willing to say? <laughs> you can start. <laughs> you should, you well, there were several of things that I could have gotten in trouble for that I didn't ah. um, I, I avoided trouble. But one thing comes to mind that was crazy. Um, we, I don't even know, I think when we must have been juniors, sophomores or juniors, and I think we were with some of the older guys, I mean, some guys were seniors. Um, and there was a big watermelon truck. The trucks used to park, you know, the underpass on Duff, mm -hmm. okay? And the watermelon yeah. trucks were parked on, it used to be kind of a lot. If you were heading downtown under the underpass, there was a lot there. And the trucks would park there overnight. I'm not quite sure why. So one night we, <laughs> we stopped there. I don't know how we knew they had watermelons. Maybe we saw them. And the girls got out of the car and we went oh so coyly into the part little area and we asked if we could please have some watermelons and the truckers came and the guy the guy stayed in the car and they couldn't see him and they gave us a couple of watermelons and we went to Inus Grove Park I don't know how many there were a couple of cars of us Inus Grove Park and we cracked the watermelons open and ate the watermelons and I don't know why we did this I think about it now glad my kids won't ever see that <laughs> <laughs> but, and we were driving driving back and we threw the watermelon rinds like out of the car. Oh my God. Oh, I know, isn't it terrible? Onto the that lot. Wow. Oh my gosh. And the watermelon truckers were not at all happy and came out and yelled at us. Okay. And of course we drove away giggling and yeah. laughing and thinking that we had done something incredibly wicked, which we had. But that's probably like the worst, worst. thing that, <laughs> that I ever did. I remember um, a group of us who, on a Friday night, probably Saturday night or whatever, we go down to Brookside Park. And of course, there were a lot of Iowa State students down there parked, making out in their cars. Uh, over there. So we would get on, four of us would get on each side of the car, and we would shake we, that car. <laughs> One time, this dude got out, and he must have been an Iowa State football player because he was like, took up, he was as big as the car. And he chased us. And it was Fred Golden, and myself, Clay Long, <laughs> Jim Hannum, I think, those guys. And he caught Fred Golden because Fred wasn't in track. <laughs> and he caught him, and he didn't hit him, but he picked him up and sternly gave him a piece of his mind. Fred wasn't little. Yeah. No, and uh, of course we were running like heck the other way and finally stopped. And then uh, he let Fred go and back to his car. Needless to say, after that, we did not do that anymore. So <laughs> yeah, and, and, and nor did we, we ever see water balance. Yeah, yeah. We, we cut that out. That just wasn't a good thing to do. Oh, that's funny. So. Well, I, the black population was unusual in that we didn't, we were told by our parents not to get in trouble. And we didn't. So, there you have it. <laughs> I, I think that even some of the mischievous stuff that I, I would say it wasn't bad stuff that we did. It was pretty mischievous. I mean, if we did something, it was mischievous. And I think Ames is, was, at that time, and I presume it probably still is pretty much, that type of town. You know, we had, um, you know, we didn't have a lot of poverty. We didn't have a lot of strife. We didn't have a lot of violence. and. Um, you Certainly know, I don't no remember any killings or anything like that when I was growing up in Ames. 
So it was kind of the population, you know, that was living here, yeah. and they passed that on to their kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. There wasn't any, as far as I knew, there wasn't any drug use at, at all um, mm -hmm. when we were in high school. I, there was some alcohol, probably the senior year, mm -hmm. um, but but there wasn't. I mean, we didn't even know what drugs were really. I have to tell you that. Unless yeah. maybe there wasn't, I didn't know that. I never had a drink in high school. I, I don't know where I was when all this was going oh, on. I, I never did but either. <laughs> when I went on to Iowa State, they, they used to call it Jim Hannum, Frank Smith, and myself, the Ames Puritan. <laughs> when we joined a fraternity. Because when we first all started, we wouldn't drink. Of course, they all had the kegers and everything yeah. else. Mm -hmm. And that took about six months, and of course, that went down the yeah. tubes, too. But, yeah. but I don't know where yeah. I was. I just never... Uh, I had any alcohol when I was a I, I find it difficult now. Do you find it difficult as far as I think music is still very, very important to me? And the music that we participated in in high school, it's very hard for me to listen to music now and think of it as music. It's a different situation. <laughs> yeah. My kids even listen to music. I agree. Yeah. My kids listen to the music I used to That's listen right. to. Yeah. You know, it was so, but you're do, right, Archie. It's, do, do, they listen to all of it, uh, but they do listen to a lot of, you know, Led Zeppelin and all that sort of good stuff yeah. too. Yeah. So, yeah. It, was, it was great music. That was, yeah. that was a fun time. Yeah. Yeah. Can you think of any world events that either impacted you at Ames High or events that influenced some of your thinking? Um, well, I believe John Kennedy was killed in 63, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, in November. After, yeah. Yeah. after we graduated. Yeah. And Vietnam was just cranking up a bit. When, a, a couple years after we graduated was when everybody was dreading you, you know, going into the military. Of course, they had the draft then and everything else. But I really think I remember Khrushchev coming, to coming town. through town it's on his too. way to the Garst farm. Mm -hmm. uh, my I grandfather my yeah. was the head horse master at Iowa State. Um, so we and he lived on Country Club Boulevard there. So, and, he, and Khrushchev came right down, saw Khrushchev, he waved at me through the gun and everything else. But it was probably more of a Cold War type uh, situation in the world. I don't think there were any big conflicts going on. Wasn't the Cuban Missile Crisis in yeah. Yeah. November yeah. that fall? I mean, it's really interesting to me when I, when I really understood better as an older adult the Cuban Missile Crisis and to realize that was, I think, believe the fall of our senior year. And I was oblivious. I mean, I knew it happened, but I never really realized yeah. mm -hmm. what it meant and what the potential could have been and sure. or, or was for, for, for all that war then. But, but I think we all kind of grew up with that yeah. war, war fear. At least I did. Uh, for the, the Cuban Missile Crisis. And I can remember going home with Ellen Green and several other classmates and we we said the final goodbye good night because we thought it would be the last night of our lives we really did and i i went away to college in, in nashville tennessee and that was the of the civil rights. I can remember sit-ins at Morrison's Cafe in Nashville. And that was really when I knew I was black. I didn't know I was, we were all equal in name Thai. And going down south to school, it was different. I was black. I was black. I think one of the big 
um, movements that were just getting started was the hippie movement. Mm -hmm. uh, the free love, nickel beer, beer the women's <laughs> liberation, yeah. uh, all of that in 1963 was just cranking up. So by the time we got to college, it was in full steam with uh, all the protests, the drugs, the, the music. Mm -hmm. The and diversity. Diversity, yeah, and it was all coming out of the wall. So it was, yeah. it was an exciting, very exciting time. Yeah, I was talking to several friends, Carol and Karen, and with all that beginning, we were aware of the health, too. I was remarking how many of our classmates came back and were alive. Yeah. And we lived through that. I think it was the beginning of your Woodstock, but also the beginning of health, being health conscious. I think so too. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, my final question typically is, when you talk to people who did not grow up in Ames, what is a memory that you'd like to tell them that encapsulates what it was like to be at Ames High, or just a sentence or paragraph that would give them an idea about what it was like to live through those years? Well, myself, I think the camaraderie, the togetherness. I, even just talking with my kids, my wife, um, they don't feel anything about their high school, their town, Ames, like I do. Um, it's played a big influence on my life. Uh, how close we all were and how we all got along and how we're still friends. Half of our class are showing up for the 50th mm -hmm. class reunion. That's mm -hmm. That's pretty good odds, thanks to Gary Mohall. <laughs> but it's just, uh, I, my wife says, you glow when you talk about Ames or Ames High. You just you perk up. You're just excited about it. And I still am, even at my age, about it. Uh, oftentimes, when I talk to somebody, a neighbor or whatever, they don't have time for me because they had absolutely no interest in high school when they were back there. So. Mm -hmm. It's hard to kind of bond with that type of thing. Okay. Um, we've talked, even in the short time that we've been together at this reunion, we've started talking about how fortunate we were to be raised in this environment and during the time period that, that we grew up. I think it was always a very safe place. It was always a very a supportive place. Um, we knew that if we strayed too far, it, it, there someone was going to know, and it might have been our parents, or, oh, that was another thing that happened, I just remember, <laughs> which was a party at my house and my oh. parents was after my senior year, oh. when my parents were in Colorado, gone to Colorado to try to find a house, oh, and God. word got out that I was alone, and this huge group of kids oh, ended up at my house, and it was not... Not as bad as what these parties are like today when that happens. That didn't happen. Yeah. But I, I know at one point I felt uncomfortable. There were too many people there wow. and so forth. But, but the point is, my mother had not even driven in the driveway, and she had reports from all the neighbors that something had happened that was That's not supposed right. to happen. That's right. And, and, and that, you always knew that if you stepped out of line too far, somebody was going to be there either to catch you or to kind of steer you back in the right direction. And it was, could have been a teacher, it could have been parents, it could have been other family, whoever it was. It was a very, not a cocoon, because that is a negative connotation. It was just a supportive place. Um, we could experiment, we could try things out, but then we were reined in if, if, um, if we ventured out too far. And I, I think that, so that's one thing. I share totally your, your feeling that, that it's hard to explain it to other people. Um, in preparation for this particular reunion, I was working on this PowerPoint presentation of kind of our high school, our senior year, our high school life, and um, my husband just didn't get it. I mean, he, he did one for his high school class, actually, for uh, um, bits and pieces of it, but he said, I just can't believe you want to spend so much time 
going through all of this, like it was a weird thing to do, or why do you want to spend all this time reliving it? I said, it's not reliving it, it's just a connection. It's just connecting, I guess, with each other and, and so forth. And I, I think it is an unusual kind of a situation. It is. Uh, and people usually go, you're from Ohio, right? And it's like, no, Iowa, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, I knew it was either Iowa or Ohio. And it's like, there's a difference. There is a difference. And that's a wonderful place to be from and, and uh, to come back to as often as we can. And I can add to either of what they said. So, so very, very well, I can add to it. <laughs> Can I just say one other thing? After reading all the bios, we all put bios on the website for this. This group has been extremely successful in life. Raising kids, these two ladies right here are both PhDs, and I'm very proud to be sitting here with them. But we have so many successful people that have been throughout the world that have been doing so many uh, important things in this global economy that we have in so, and it's very fun to talk to them about it. And they're, everybody's very open uh, when we get together. Thank you so much for sharing time with me. I know you are going to have a fun time celebrating. You're going to have a fun time sharing memories. And I so appreciate you taking a little time to uh, share them with me. So thank you very much. Thank you, Teresa. It's been fun.